Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to the another uh, tutorial uh, and today uh, I'll show you how I created this uh, stylized uh, tile. Uh, it's uh, a very interesting workflow uh, because it's not uh, very common uh, to create uh, stylized uh, textures uh, procedurally because uh, the process is uh, uh, involved with a lot of uh, 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 of uh, hand painting uh, and uh, I uh, uh, created and uh, developed uh, different uh, techniques uh, how you can like uh, emulate uh, this uh, stylized look uh, painterly look um, in Substance Designer so it will be really I think uh, interesting uh, tutorial because it's uh, not so like um, uh, how to say uh, so there are uh, a lot of uh, different um, interesting workflows uh, how to achieve uh, such effect uh, so of course uh, I'm starting to look uh, in different uh, textures and different uh, stylized uh, references uh, and lately I was working uh, with a lot of uh, such textures and uh, the main idea was to uh, try to use Substance uh, Designer to create uh, uh, such uh, textures um, so yeah, uh, I'll try you to show how I achieved uh, this effect. Uh, so let's start. Uh, let's start from the beginning, uh, from the tiles itself. Uh, so as uh, the starting point, I'm using uh, tile random uh, with uh, different settings. Uh, you can like uh, explore by yourself, but uh, the main uh, thing is to uh, create uh, different uh, random tiles um, because in like uh, uh, fantasy and uh, stylized games uh, different uh, interesting uh, patterns, especially uh, on the ground, like different uh, stone tiles uh, as much variety uh, as you like uh, can uh, create on the ground is better and uh, uh, so that's why I'm using uh, tile random and uh, trying to achieve uh, such effect uh, and create different uh, uh, sizes of the uh, tiles and different forms so just experiment with those settings and try to like uh, take uh, uh, to um, get different uh, uh, variety of your tiles uh, so you can like change uh, for, exam for example uh, Y mount and you will see how it's uh, changing now it's a little bit broken here but maybe like 5 and still the same problem so yeah four four is four is nice I think so yeah just uh, experiment with the, all those uh, settings and uh, eventually you will get uh, some kind of interesting pattern and uh, always uh, check with uh, space bar uh, how it will tile uh, on the like uh, multiple tiles and uh, you need like to uh, achieve uh, the effect uh, that it will tile but not uh, really uh, repetitive uh, for example in distance view so always check uh, multiple tiles uh, the next uh, for example uh, here uh, you can see that I have uh, different uh, uh, tile random setup uh, and we actually can look how it, uh, how it will look so it's more like a uh, simple, uh, simple tile. Yeah, so I like something like this. 
Uh, the next uh, step is uh, using levels uh, and uh, I'm using here levels just to bring up uh, the uh, the levels <laughs> of my tiles uh, the next uh, here I'm just uh, uh, using like a histogram range but in my case I'm using levels just to bring uh, values a little bit together uh, so here for example uh, you see I have like uh, complete blacks and uh, here I have more like white and grayish uh, values uh, next step uh, after we have uh, basically our uh, tile combination is uh, edge detect uh, basically what this node is doing is creating uh, edges uh, between uh, tiles uh, so after uh, I have a bevel node uh, and with bevel, with uh, such distance, I create uh, a little bit of uh, beveling uh, of the tile. Uh, so, yeah, you can like uh, increase or decrease distance and play with this uh, like uh, setting, and uh, you will uh, see how it is just increasing the depth over wall and the height of each tile. So. Again, just experiment uh, and uh, play uh, with the all those settings and uh, you will get uh, some kind of uh, nice effect. Uh, so this uh, value uh, for such tiles I think uh, is okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so <laughs> uh, now we have like a little bit of depth. Um, uh, 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 here we have uh, some masks uh, and I will explain a little bit later how I'm using those uh, but basically they are using for like uh, uh, color uh, ran uh, random uh, and uh, different like uh, cracks uh, randomization uh, overall uh, so basically as soon as I have uh, my mm, uh, tiles already I can like uh, use a uh, histogram shift uh, to like uh, play with the variety of uh, uh, of basically creating different kind of masks uh, for example you can uh, see the histogram scan and if I will uh, play with the position uh, the mask uh, will change uh, eventually and of course it's all like uh, rebuilding here So we can get uh, different uh, color variation and uh, different uh, stones uh, uh, with uh, different cracks and etc. So it's really really nice. Okay, uh, uh, all about uh, all those masks a little bit uh, later, <laughs> as I said. Uh, the next step. Uh, I'm uh, blending uh, my uh, bevel uh, node depth uh, for the tiles uh, with my like uh, just grayscale tiles and uh, I have like uh, first uh, height map uh, with uh, like uh, edges uh, uh, with bevels and uh, the variety of the values so for example, uh, those stones are a little bit up, upper, those stones a little bit uh, lower. So when I will use, uh, for example, height map uh, in the engine, uh, my, st my uh, stones, uh, my tiles uh, will have the variety uh, in height. So it is adding a little bit more interest. Uh, but uh, it's uh, really like a low variety because I'm not like looking for something crazy here. Uh, next step uh, in creating height map uh, are the small like uh, 
small dots. Uh, if you will like to look uh, on a lot of uh, textures, uh, uh, fantasy especially, uh, you will see that uh, there are different uh, painterly marks uh, on top of the stones and uh, such uh, dots are uh, really common uh, and that's uh, why I'm using uh, and it is uh, really adding uh, quite interest because you have uh, angular uh, shapes and uh, circular shapes and you can uh, play with the uh, depth uh, and with the sizes of those uh, dots and it is adding a little bit uh, more interest uh, and a little uh, bit of another layer, layer uh, of uh, interesting details on top of your uh, tiles. Uh, so the process of creating those uh, dots is really simple. I am using uh, shape uh, paraboloid uh, after I'm using a uh, splitter circular with uh, some kind of different settings you can just uh, pause and explore it a little bit uh, but basically there is nothing crazy I'm just messing with the position of uh, those uh, uh, dots uh, slow, slow blur uh, scale uh, but here I'm uh, not using anything for the slope, uh, but maybe I used... Yeah, maybe I used uh, a little bit uh, uh, earlier. <laughs> maybe the it's, it's, uh, itself the shape uh, uh, of the dot. But for now I just uh, uh, live as it is with um, a variety of, of the... Uh, uh, gradient uh, of the shape so basically it's you can maybe use uh, different uh, uh, noises and uh, to break up a little bit of the shape but uh, the uh, main tip I can give you uh, while creating uh, those kind of textures is uh, adding uh, as much uh, as, as less as you can uh, uh, realistic uh, effects uh, for all your height maps. It's uh, really hard, especially if you really like to create realistic uh, tiles and I really like to create those. Uh, so uh, I'm basically forcing myself to create really like small touches for each uh, shapes uh, that I'm using uh, in uh, stylized uh, textures. Uh, so you just need like to put uh, the indication. Uh, and in this um, in this case, uh, those small dots are like a really uh, approximation of uh, of uh, how to say different uh, erosion on top of the stones and different uh, um, not like cracks, but different imperfections. And your brain, uh, as soon as it uh, will uh, see the uh, tile uh, itself with those uh, small little details, it's already enough uh, for the understanding uh, for the understanding that you are looking onto the stone. Uh, and uh, uh, this um, some kind of uh, 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 workflow is uh, really useful uh, for all uh, types of uh, fantasy textures that you are creating uh, wood, uh, stones, rocks and etc. You just put the indication of the realistic look and uh, move on uh, and uh, I it, will, it will look uh, um, just already all right uh, so you don't need like to create especially a lot of uh, uh, realistic stuff in your textures uh, especially with cracks for example uh, and I'll explain a little bit later um, so let's go uh, to the next uh, next um, uh, note uh, histogram scan uh, I just uh, decreased a little bit I think uh, after a slow blur scale uh, the size of the dots, uh, directional warp, uh, and here you can see that I just a little bit uh, randomized uh, the uh, shape, round shape, uh, and here I 
I'm using uh, scale uh, safe uh, transform uh, grayscale and just uh, increase the amount of uh, dots and blend it uh, with the previous one with this one so basically I'm blending this one and this one uh, and I'm getting uh, just a variety of the uh, sizes again so I have like a big and small dot now I'm adding those dots uh, with a subtract uh, a blending mode and you can see it's really subtle uh, but yeah it's it's working here so next next step um, uh, cracks or cuts uh, it's the really like straight um, forward process of creating cracks uh, basically it's so my you can just uh, I'm not using something special here uh, I think uh, maybe I'm mistaken by but I think the main process was um, described by uh, Josh Lynch uh, incredible substance uh, designer artist uh, so yeah um, basically I'm using uh, his uh, workflow but uh, maybe a little bit simpler uh, and yeah so I'll show you how, how I'm using it uh, again I'm using a uh, tile sampler with a uh, disk pattern I'm just uh, r random uh, random settings but uh, the main thing is to get the uh, variety uh, in uh, 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 value uh, and that's it basically so you don't need like the variety in shapes uh, or sizes uh, only one important thing is to uh, create the variety in uh, value uh, because uh, uh, the next node uh, it's a distance node it is using this information coming from tile sampler and creating basically a really nice look of like simple cracks um, uh, here levels I'm using uh, it's it's like the additional step because I can like uh, turn it a little bit and uh, you can see that it is a really uh, nice uh, uh, workflow to uh, oops sorry <laughs> to like uh, get different uh, pattern for your cracks so you can see just moving a little bit here it's working a little bit slowly <laughs> so yeah uh, after distance uh, node uh, I have a uh, great uh, node edge detect uh, and uh, I'm just uh, getting the uh, edges uh, in between uh, basically cracks uh, in between uh, uh, next step is uh, blur uh, high quality gray scale to uh, make uh, those lines uh, with less uh, artifacts uh, before you can see it's a little bit uh, noisy and after you will see you can see uh, really like uh, soft uh, soft lines uh, next step is slow blur scale uh, it's uh, adding those uh, really uh, 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 cool uh, nice details um, on the cracks so you can see uh, different uh, like imp imperfections uh, between uh, and I'm using for the slope uh, clouds one uh, after I uh, transform it uh, just double size it uh, here and uh, next step is a little bit of blur uh, high quality grayscale and I have this effect. Um, okay, next step is directional warp. Uh, again, I'm using uh, Clouds 3 uh, with a blur uh, high quality grayscale, and it is going into like intensity input. 
uh, and uh, if you will compare before and after uh, you will see that uh, here I have uh, the uh, really important stuff uh, um, this is another another tip that I want to point that um, in distance you you can see that uh, uh, those cracks are looking that they are painterly uh, achieved <laughs> so basically the lines that were like uh, painted by hand uh, basically this is like the effect that I'm looking for that's why I'm using uh, directional work with uh, those settings to create uh, this uh, wavy wavy effect uh, that it might be like painted by hand uh, that's uh, yeah and I think it's qu quite s quite similar effect uh, I achieving here um, uh, next step is uh, directional warp uh, with really high intensity it's just breaking the repetitive look uh, not like repetitive but in that case if I will just apply now the cracks on top of the uh, stones I will get that each crack is coming from one stone to another stone to another stone and basically it's not happening in nature uh, it's and it doesn't matter is it like stylized texture or uh, not it's just uh, your work will uh, you sorry brain will just immediately uh, understood that something is wrong here if it will see uh, the crack is coming from one stone to another stone so yeah uh, use uh, directional warp uh, and for the intensity input y I'm just using my tile that basically tile my f like first uh, tile that I'm starting from I'm using f uh, the same tile for the intensity input uh, with really like huge uh, intensity as I said and some variety in uh, angle uh, I got uh, that uh, you can see here that um, cracks are coming stop and uh, in other cracks are coming uh, from other side so this is basically the result of this directional warp and you can use it uh, as you see for example here I'm using uh, everywhere where the uh, some uh, kind of uh, shapes are applying on top of the my stones uh, and uh, I just need like to randomize uh, the effect that I need like to achieve here and as much as uh, the randomization you will have it will uh, bring th like the more like uh, random look of your texture and of course more realistic not in terms of uh, realistic uh, stylized uh, or not stylized uh, but in terms of uh, uh, in terms of interest I think uh, it, it, it will look uh, less procedural generated and more like uh, hand painted mm. okay the next step is a blend node with my cracks and uh, this uh, 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 this uh, directional warp uh, here I'm just using uh, parallel noise with uh, mosaic grayscale and uh, if you just look uh, uh, how the cracks are uh, painted on top of stones uh, uh, some cracks uh, like randomly for example they could like start from uh, really like uh, broad line and thin line and broad line uh, some cracks uh, could stop uh, uh, in the stone but here you don't see this effect but I will just show you now um, how it is looking mm. I can use for example levels put here and here and uh, just look on the cracks and I will start to work with levels and you can already see that uh, my cracks uh, they are coming uh, from one side and disappearing coming from here and disappearing uh, this is a cool thing on here or here for example it's like uh, nice nice shape I like it 
it's it depends uh, on your style and how you want like to uh, h how you want uh, the final look of your texture mm. uh, so sometimes it is working uh, here I decided to not uh, use this uh, effect I just uh, just a little bit uh, breaked uh, down how the uh, thin and thick line uh, of the crack is uh, going on top of the stone to like create more uh, variation uh, of this effect uh, but yeah you definitely can use this method to like completely erase uh, some cracks uh, on uh, on uh, on different st si uh, sides of the stone so now we have uh, cracks uh, and I can show you how it is looking with normal uh, yeah so basically cracks <laughs> that's it um, now we go back to our uh, height map uh, and here I'm applying with multiply uh, uh, 0 0.2 uh, opacity on top of my uh, stones tile stones uh, okay the next step is uh, a warp node uh, you can see the difference I'm just using uh, perlin noise uh, with uh, directional warp I'm just uh, playing uh, with different effects you can just use perlin noise uh, but as soon as I want like to experiment and add more like uh, randomization I'm doing uh, after standard uh, uh, noise another pass and maybe you can create another pass to break the like uh, default look of the noise and here I'm uh, doing like directional warp and for the intensity input I'm using my uh, output from the edge detect uh, and beveling so basically uh, here I'm using like uh, uh, my uh, black and white information of the edges in between the stones uh, for the directional warp uh, I, I can't like describe why I'm using this but I'm just experimented and I liked how the shape uh, uh, how the shape is looking uh, after doing th such effect you can see that uh, the uh, sh uh, the, the f um, flow of this uh, height is going uh, uh, by the uh, in between edges uh, so it's uh, looking like a painterly effect and that's why here it's uh, like really uh, looking natural that the line is going uh, like uh, down a little bit up uh, so it's uh, looking like uh, it's uh, uh, created by hand, uh, not just play, uh, placed uh, each tile to each tile. Uh, it's it's more like um, a more interesting effect, I think. And you can uh, experiment uh, with the intensity uh, of the warp, uh, and you can uh, add more or less. For example, some mm, I, I like a little bit more maybe you see how it's curved uh, the uh, stones especially here you can see that it's 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 really like it's really like uh, more like paint really effect because of course in reality you don't see those uh, kind of shapes of uh, t tile stones but when you paint <laughs> it it's 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 cool it's looking nice mm so next step is uh, slope uh, blur uh, and uh, I'm of course my like not not only my <laughs> but uh, the most popular note uh, for creating uh, imperfections uh, on the sides uh, and different cracks and different variety on the edges of these tones uh, so yeah basically I have like this variety uh, and I'm using clouds 3 uh, with uh, blur high quality grayscale for the slope itself and those settings uh, with uh, mode min uh, so basically I'm carving 
uh, like around the uh, shape of the stone. Mm, okay, the next uh, step is uh, big cuts. Uh, basically, this is a quite important step because uh, here you can see that I'm uh, now working uh, on the flat sh uh, flat surface of the stone uh, especially here uh, uh, it's really a uh, nice looking detail because it is adding the layer o o on uh, the surface of the uh, tile stone and this layering is creating another effect uh, of interest and adding uh, really like uh, for example here um, a paint painterly look uh, and uh, and depth uh, at the same time and here you can see uh, and it's it's this effect is basically uh, creating the look of the stone and your brain automatically understand that it's it's not just paint painted it's 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 stone it's it's uh, this style is made from stone uh, and now I can show you how I created uh, this um, pattern. Uh, I style uh, started uh, sorry from uh, tile sampler uh, again. Just messed. Uh, I think I'm just using the same tile sampler I used uh, for the uh, dots here. I'm just experiment with the settings and just created. Uh, maybe like changed <laughs> only uh, x uh, x amount and y amount uh, and that's it. Um, basically, the shape is not important. Again, it is really important the difference in the values. Uh, again, I'm using levels and distance node. Uh, the same uh, workflow as I'm using with uh, cracks. Uh, uh, because b basically this is uh, not not a crack, but really like looking similar uh, like a crack. Uh, next step is uh, blur uh, high quality gray scale. Just uh, uh, decreased the aliasing between uh, between those uh, stone looking shapes. Uh, slow blur scale. Just variety uh, on the edges. And for the slope, I'm using uh, of course uh, what I'm using here. Uh, okay, the same cloud three with uh, blur high quality gray scale. I'm using here, um, yeah, uh, with really like subtle effect. Uh, next note is warp. Uh, it's really this is note uh, that I is adding the paint really look overall again, um, and I think yeah, I'm using the same basically cloud three with blur high quality grayscale uh, noise to create uh, for for the gradient input for the uh, warp node. Um, next step is directional warp again with my tiles uh, and um, yeah it's, it's just breaking you see the uh, transition between stones uh. sorry um, yeah, so the transition between stones uh, is a little bit um, as as uh, the same as with cracks uh, I did before. Uh, so basically, you can see that uh, I'm using uh, almost everywhere the, the same workflow. Uh, just a lot of blurs, a lot of slow blurs and uh, warps. Uh, to break the procedural look of the uh, noise and just uh, layering, layering, layering uh, the effect after uh, each other and uh, uh, at the end I'm getting something like this. And this is like the blend with the uh, uh, this uh, note and uh, this is like a mosaic grayscale basically I'm using it for the uh, grout, but I will show you really quickly how I like achieved this. Uh, just again, the clouds to uh, histogram range. I just bring 
uh, the values a little bit closer to each other, uh, blur it uh, and uh, a mosaic grayscale node. Just uh, you see. Uh, in other tutorials, I described uh, the effect that this node is doing. So basically, you can uh, just uh, have these uh, sloppy uh, shapes. Um, so it's looking cool. I'm just uh, blending uh, with multiply on top uh, of my uh, surface uh, cracks here. Um, and uh, let's uh, go back to the height. Uh, hope it's not uh, too fast, guys. Uh, and uh, if you have any like suggestions uh, or like uh, critics, I'm really open to it. Uh, just uh, put in the comments. Uh, maybe I'm uh, talking too fast, or maybe explaining too fast. Uh, you can uh, ask any questions. Um, but I'm trying, like, to mm, uh, to go through the graph uh, uh, as quick uh, as uh, possible because uh, I know that the time is is really like valu valuable. <laughs> and I won't like to put as much uh, inside and input uh, uh, into like small amount of time. <laughs> um, okay, the next uh, step is, uh, yeah, uh, I'm adding uh, my uh, big cuts, uh, those cuts uh, on top of my uh, height map. It's basically the another pass. Uh, and the last pass is uh, adding grout, uh, and I think it's the right time to describe how I created uh, the grout. But basically, it's the uh, final note of the height map of this uh, tile. So you can see it's it's not really like uh, complex at all. Uh, it's really like a couple of notes and uh, just uh, just work, uh, just sculpt uh, as, for example, you work in like in ZBrush. Uh, I'm just sculpting, 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 adding details, uh, another layer layer of details, and basically I have like uh, f a final height map. And for the grout. Uh, I have it here and I just will explain f uh, pretty fast how I created it. Uh, basically, again, uh, Clouds 2, as I already described, uh, I will skip to the mosaic gray scale, uh, uh, blurred it a little bit, uh, and uh, uh, those notes just, uh, I think I'm not like uh, used to those. Uh, because uh, I don't know why <laughs> I maybe like experimented with something but don't like it uh, didn't like it sorry um, okay uh, let's go back to the grout um, I blended uh, my blurred version uh, with not blurred version uh, and for the opacity I'm using a moisture noise uh, node uh, with pretty pretty like uh, uh, default settings uh, and uh, I'm uh, getting like the effect uh, of the blurred uh, and non blurred uh, textures uh, blended together with this mask so here for example you can see like uh, uh, soft uh, variety of edges and crisp uh, edges uh, after I'm using like levels and bringing this grout with my uh, tile stones uh, with uh, max lighten and opacity one, so it's it's really subtle. You can see maybe here that some kind of like uh, gravel is coming uh, up under the stones, but as I said, um, it's really like uh, subtle. Uh, nothing crazy, no details, no small stones, rocks uh, in between uh, uh, because um, uh, as I said uh, you just need to think that this uh, texture is uh, created uh, by hand and of course artists uh, don't uh, they wouldn't sit and uh, paint uh, this all small little uh, 
uh, details uh, and small stones uh, in the ground because basically it's it's not it's not that uh, all those uh, fantasy stylized hand painted textures are all about they are just about painterly look uh, so yeah don't like add uh, small mi micro details it will just add the uh, unnecessary realism uh, on your textures and it will just uh, kill the uh, like freely hand painted look um, uh, it's I, I came to this uh, not like uh, at the first time I just experiment, uh, experimented uh, a lot and looked uh, uh, on other textures uh, because uh, I can't like paint those textures so maybe uh, for me is a little bit maybe easier to sculpt uh, those uh, shapes in uh, ZBrush uh, but as uh, soon as I like to create uh, my re realistic textures in Substance Designer uh, I try to use it uh, for the uh, hand painted textures and really I was like amazed uh, with the effect I can achieve with it and actually I'm planning uh, planning to create a lot of uh, uh, tutorials about stylized textures and if, if, if you are interested uh, in those kind of tutorials just uh, leave the comments uh, because uh, I like uh, created a lot of those uh, textures and really like uh, go deep <laughs> with this uh, theme um, uh, of texturing. Uh, so yeah, mm, uh, I, I really like like how you use uh, uh, even PBR. Uh, I will explain a little bit later that uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, really working because a lot of people are thinking that PBR shader, uh, physical based rendering is really good for the realistic uh, uh, materials and textures as it was really like created for but it's perfectly uh, working with those stylized look and yeah but you like really caref careful uh, with uh, roughness for example and other like uh, surface uh, details uh, of your texture uh, okay, so we have here the final uh, height map, uh, and uh, now I think it's time to move uh, uh, into the uh, basically color uh, process. Uh, roughness uh, is really again simple. Uh, I have here, and I will explain it a little bit later. Uh, as I said before, I'm not like really crazy about roughness. I'm trying to uh, get the final like uh, reflectivity and uh, uh, su surface variety uh, of the um, overall material and I'm not like going too crazy, too like uh, noisy with the roughness. Because uh, it's really important note and if you overdone it or like uh, over complicated it uh, the material will uh, will like uh, read uh, in my opinion of course uh, hard I think or maybe I just can't <laughs> work properly with the roughness who knows yeah um, Okay, uh, this is a really interesting uh, part of the tutorial because, um, um, yeah, sorry, I'm just checking that I described everything uh, about the creating height map. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, sorry, the uh, coloring process itself, uh, a as it means like hand painted is really interesting uh, and I uh, studied uh, a lot of uh, different uh, textures, stylized textures and uh, uh, like a first pass uh, actually I tried to texture uh, as I see you know for example it is working for the realistic textures using like layers but uh, afterwards uh, when I experimented uh, and uh, explore a little bit more deeply the textures I spotted that uh, there are like uh, 
a really important uh, three or four tips uh, that are working for the hand painted textures and I just uh, uh, broke down those uh, tips uh, into the steps in Substance Designer and after this I got the effect that I'm looking for. Before when I started like to texture uh, as as I like used to for example using like gradient map or something it was really not looking like a hand painted texture. So yeah enough talking <laughs> let's look how I create it. Uh, I think uh, the uh, okay uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, here I have uh, ho basically how I'm creating the first uh, base uh, color. Uh, I'm having uh, moisture noise as a mask and uh, here I have like two colors I'm just blending. Uh, actually here I'm not using it uh, because uh, it's for the another color variation. Uh, for example you can see that I for example can use uh, you see it's a little bit other colors uh, and uh, I was using uh, those colors uh, uh, the, uh, at the beginning uh, those colors were used for the color uh, grout and basically they are they're using for the uh, grout uh, but uh, I really don't like it those colors uh, I liked more those uh, and basically I blend uh, again uh, with uh, moisture noise, uh, blur high quality grayscale and uh, mosaic grayscale. Uh, I got this uh, noise uh, as a mask and I blended uh, those two colors and uh, get uh, this uh, really like paint really look. I like it. It's it's more like uh, you use like your br um, r simple round uh, brush uh, in Photoshop uh, and uh, like uh, work with like uh, some kind of uh, just 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 paint you know just uh, just uh, getting like paint really look that is it's if if you can like explore how uh, uh, for example work in progress of the pictures that are painted in Photoshop by different like artists uh, that are using simple round brush they are starting from those kind of uh, block outs of the colors and values and after just uh, detail 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 and uh, basically they will get uh, the final look of the picture and that's why I'm using this uh, 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 mosaic grayscale uh, mask to get this uh, paint really look of the uh, color base. Uh, so this uh, texture is going to the uh, directional warp again to break uh, by the tiles uh, this paint really look that it is, pa it is uh, painted by the tile not just um, as a single picture. Uh, next step is uh, I'm blending uh, with this uh, mask I created earlier I already like described how I created this mask basically it's, it's uh, histogram shift uh, my like uh, tile random uh, tiles and uh, after a histogram scan you can again uh, play with the position and contrast and get any variety of the mask you just need. Basically it is using for the um, for the different uh, color uh, of different stones. Uh, it's really subtle, uh, it's not like different, uh, it's not like really differ from uh, the color before. Um, and that by, th by the way I'm using this color, not from here you can see. Uh, now I'm using like three colors, but they are really close to each other. This is a little bit like uh, darkish purple, this is like purple, light purple, and this is more like uh, uh, bluish, uh, coldish uh, color. And here you can see that I'm using this, even this, more like ocean, uh, ocean green. Um, so yeah, I'm using mask with this color and uh, this one and I'm I'm getting this you see d uh, more like variety in uh, value and here I'm adding uh, with this mask uh, the uh, another coloring coloring of the stone 
uh, here you must be really careful with your colors because uh, uh, if you are like creating um, maybe stones and you need like to use more like coldish uh, colors uh, but uh, the variety of the uh, uh, even the temperature of the cold and warm uh, blue colors is really important because uh, it is creating this paint really look overall but you need like really careful uh, with what you are uh, doing for example I have like another graph uh, uh, with another tile for example more like sand tile you can see here and uh, I'm just basically using the same graph but another like tile variety and uh, you see it's uh, more like uh, sand tiles uh, but yeah and the texture itself is looking like this and you see you need like to be really careful with the variety in value and color itself so yeah and this is like the beauty of the substance designer that you can really create the your master graph and experiment a lot with tiles, shapes, cracks uh, and overall look of your material so okay um, okay we have basically this result sorry I just bring my water <laughs> Okay. Um, next step is the, uh, the step that is um, I described a little bit earlier uh, that uh, I just um, how to say uh, bring this idea of painting uh, warm uh, shadows and for example cold uh, rim light uh this uh this idea is coming from the basically painting uh and it is um really like um important in hand painted textures uh this this uh thing is uh here uh that i'm using like p b r workflow and as you know that uh you can't uh include any uh, directional light into the textures uh, no shadows no like rim lights uh, no ambient occlusion uh, but uh, here is the trick uh, just include those <laughs> um, because uh, you know the uh, workflow of creating PBR textures that is like described uh, uh, everywhere and I think uh, there is like uh, some kind of uh, uh, presentation from Quixel, I think, or from the uh, Marmoset, uh, maybe on their website. It's a really like cool uh, how you can use uh, PBR uh, workflow for creating like realistic textures. But as soon as we are creating not like realistic stuff here, but stylized, you need like to again to use the principles of creating all those textures and if you will like explore you will see that there is like uh, direction light is painted in and wh wh what to do yeah uh, as soon as we using like PBR uh, workflow uh, but uh, at the end I just uh, will show you really quickly the end result of the texture you can see that this texture is looking basically that you can use it for example just a simple diffuse with baked light on it with light map without any like PBR shader and it already looking like a paint painted uh, texture uh, but it's really like subtle if you are planning to use PBR uh, texturing don't afraid to add ambient occlusion don't afraid to add uh, directional light because at the end I think in my opinion it's looking uh, nice if you just add a little bit of lighting into your like texture it's not uh, breaking the PBR workflow it's not uh, uh, it's it's working it's looking nice in my opinion you can see here for example the warm shadows and cold uh, rim light and 
I don't know, but I think it's it's working. So definitely don't afraid to include those uh, lights into your textures. It will just pay off, I think. Uh, and now I will explain how to create those shadows and it is really like a simple workflow but really important mm, I will use it the same for the rim light highlights uh, yeah so what I'm doing uh, I have a height map and I have a normal node um, and for the normal node um, I'm uh, using uh, after like uh, normal node, I'm using R uh, RGBA uh, split. Uh, uh, why I'm using it? Uh, I need a green channel. Uh, basically, what is the green channel of the normal mob? Uh, it is uh, giving me basically the uh, mask for the rim light uh, and for the shadows. So, if you like explore this map, this is uh, the green channel of the normal map. Uh, you can see uh, really shadows and highlights. Um, again, now this is really really like important. Now I need like the mask for those parts uh, of the shading. Uh, I'm using levels. And uh, when you're using levels, uh, you will see the histogram. Uh, and for the uh, shadows, uh, you need like the left part of the histogram, right before the middle of the histogram, where the basically uh, values are switching. Switching, sorry. Uh, so here, uh, I'm already created the mask for the shadows. You see, uh, here I have the mask for the. Uh, not mask, but the information for the uh, rim light. And after I just invert it and bam, I have the mask for the rim light. Um, uh, after I just, uh, you see it's a little bit noisy and I blur it a little bit and I blur it uh, for the shadows. Uh, and now I can use this mask for the shadows. And here uh, uh yeah and uh sorry <laughs> and here i'm using the mask for the highlights okay so basically that's uh, what i'm uh, having here and you can see that even uh in the cracks uh you can see the a light that is touching the edge and uh, cold light, blue cold light and warm uh, orange light is touching another uh, edge uh, and of course uh, on the bricks uh, stone uh, tiles too basically I'm using here the method that the light is coming from the top uh, and uh, another light uh, is coming warm light from the bottom uh yeah so and here uh you can see i'm just uh, rotating my cylinder and you can see that the light is coming from everywhere uh directional light uh, and it's those uh light that is baked into the albeda uh, is not uh ruining uh is not like changing or just distracting uh I think it's just adding a little bit of the interest of your texture. You can see that here uh, this is like a warm shadows and here you can see it's uh, really like cold rim light. Mm, I like it. Uh, okay, now we have another mask and it is looking like this. Uh, how I can create it? Again, I'm going back to the normal map and now I'm using curvature for it. Basically you can see already it is looking like a mask. Uh, pass with the levels. Again you can check the histogram. It is uh, these, those settings are working for like every curvature uh, and uh, it's bringing you the uh, mask for the like um, 
edges, rims, uh, and overall surface uh, of uh, the uh, stones. Uh, again, blur a little bit uh, and blend um, with another uh, curvature. Uh, here I am using curvature smooth and here I am using uh, just a standard curvature. The difference is that those uh, details are like sharp and this is more like broad and, and soft. Mm. So I'm using this uh, standard curvature, uh, again levels, again the same position for the uh, histogram, uh, blur it and combine. Uh, so basically I'm combining soft uh, curvature with uh, standard curvature uh, hard lines. Uh, more like uh, bring bringing like uh, the hard uh, edges uh, a little bit more. So I blend it all together, and here I'm using with multiply the blend uh, with uh, parallel noise zoom. Uh, I'm just adding. You see, it's overall uh, really like highlighted overall, and I just. Uh, with this blending I just uh, break uh, break the uh, high uh, highlight of the uh, overall all, all, sorry <laughs> uh, breaking the highlight overall uh, so you can see those like a little bit di darker parts those a little bit uh, shinier uh, so yeah it's just another pass with the variety uh, okay uh, I have another like stuff here, but I think I'm not using those. Uh, this is basically a nice uh, 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 mask for the uh, occlusion uh, map, but uh, I'm using like a standard ambient occlusion uh, node uh, for the uh, ambient occlusion, and I will show you a little bit later, basically at the end uh, of the uh, color map. Okay, so we created the mask and you can see the difference uh, between. Uh, this is really like subtle, you see a, a little bit of the warm light is coming onto the edges. Uh, and the uh, last note, uh, not last but like here it is looking like a last but it's not like the last one. Uh, I'm using like uh, this mask for the rim light, and this mask uh, I got uh, from the again curvature smooth levels, but uh, I played with the levels a little bit more to get only like the edges of the stones, uh, and histogram scanner to bring it more, and uh, here I'm using the again uh, some kind of grayish color and uh, just uh, add uh, a rim light on top of the uh, tile stones. And you can see uh, with like uh, low opacity and overall overlay mode uh, it's looking that I painted it in Photoshop with opacity so it's uh, really looking um, like a painted texture um, and uh, of course, thanks f that Substance Designer is uh, having uh, this blend uh, node with all the blending modes that are available in Photoshop and you can use those in uh, Substance uh, Designer. Uh, so it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically you can achieve this effect um, just uh, freely in Designer. Okay, um, now I will describe before the next step, uh, I will describe uh, the uh, workflow that I'm using for creating grout, but as soon as it's not really like visible here, it's not really like important, but still again it's nice to have it something, because Maybe you later want to add maybe a little bit of grass in between of those uh, stones. Uh, that's why maybe it will be like 
ground will be more greenish and it's really nice to have it not only working with stones uh, but working with grout too uh, again as I described uh, already here I'm using basically it's the same that was used for the stones surface color but here I'm using um, for the grout basically those steps you can ignore it uh, it's uh, for the experiments um, uh, because uh, I tried maybe this is like the next note after those uh, when I'm combining uh, grout with stones uh, blending sorry mm, with this mask and I will explain a little bit later uh, what is th actually the mask. Uh, I think maybe e adding like another uh, coloring for the shadows and for the highlights uh, when the uh, stones will blend, uh, tile stones will blend with the crowd. Uh, highlights and shadows will blend with those uh, highlights and shadows and maybe it I and in my opinion uh, I thought maybe it will add another la layer of the variety uh, in coloring but uh, in my case it's not really like working too much uh, but still it's something happening here and I decided to leave it uh, is uh, it is as it is uh, but it's not really like important you just um, I think put here and you can see it's 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 doing something and it's I think it's nice to have it you see it's a little bit of variation in coloring and it's it's nice so yeah I, I just uh, leave it as it is okay uh, what the mask yeah uh, basically this is the mask for the grout you can see the white in between the tiles and um, uh, I created this uh, mask from the ambient occlusion. Ah, no, sorry, not from the ambient occlusion. Uh, basically, it's the same mask, uh, the same uh, blend node that I'm using here, but with uh, divide. Yeah. Uh, basically, on top is coming the height map and uh, for the background is coming my uh, height map for the uh, grout mm, and when you are using divide it will just show you where the grout is going and you can see there is like grout maybe like a little bit of sand on top of the stones uh, which is really nice and uh, of course the grout is uh, in between of the stones so this note uh, I'm using here and just blending my grout, this one, with my uh, colored stones and I have this one. Um, okay, the basically this is uh, this is like albedo, you see. Uh, this is like final albedo uh, but not like correct one as I said because uh, the uh, highlights uh, are baked inside uh, the albedo but who cares <laughs> I like it uh, so yeah um, so yeah let's have it as it is uh, it's not like albedo yeah we're creating like stylized map so let's push it to, to till the end uh, the next step uh, it's really like subtle it's not maybe even visible in the video it is just uh, the layer of the uh, gradation with the bluish color and for the mask I'm using uh, the mask that is coming from the ambient occlusion uh, and I can show you here uh, I'm just using like the standard uh, AO node um, yeah so this is and I am just in inverting it uh, and level it and adding uh, so basically this is like another like level a layer of the interest that is coming 
into the shadows and uh, is coming on top of the stones um, so yes uh, it's the it's the look of the stone and the last step uh, is adding ambient occlusion like the final uh, little touch that is creating your, your like map that is basically painted so as soon as we added uh, all the lights to the shadow to the highlight to the rim light and on top of the stones now we need like add the depth uh, uh, on your uh, texture and I'm using uh, again the same mask uh, for the uh, from the ambient occlusion um, I'm using like ambient uh, occlusion more. Uh, it's basically the same ambient occlusion, but uh, with another uh, another like settings. Uh, you can see the difference here th and here. That uh, uh, here I'm touching even like smallest uh, details uh, on the surface, and here I'm just uh, touching the biggest depth uh, in between only for cracks and only uh, uh, the cracks in between of the stones and again I am uh, in invert uh, inverting it uh, leveling uh, levels uh, doing levels uh, and yeah yeah this is uh, uh, blend with uh, warm brownish color because as soon as I have uh, coldish uh, stones, uh, bluish cold stones. I need like a little bit warm, uh, warm into the shadows. That's why I'm using this uh, brownish uh, warm color and adding it uh, inside uh, inside the shadows. So yeah, this is uh, how the texture is uh, looking, it's styling, and yeah. Um, I will just quickly go through the uh, roughness uh, as soon as we are using PBR shader here so we need like to create it uh, so basically the main idea again is using uh, for the uh, surface indication uh, my uh, tile sampler uh, node uh, the original one for the tiles I'm just histogram arranged it uh, because as soon as uh, I need like uh, the values need to be as close uh, as possible to each other but with small uh, variety uh, because I don't need like to look uh, the roughness too noisy uh, too noisy uh, I think uh, it's a little bit better uh, looking with these uh, uh, values uh, of the roughness uh, here I'm having the uh, note, you remember the uh, noise uh, for the surface cracks as soon as now we are working with surface uh, roughness uh, I just uh, inverted it uh, and why I did it, uh, this is uh, really like important you can see on the roughness that this part is shinier than this part and it is going up so for example here uh, this uh, part is going up this part is going a little bit down on the surface and it's more like matte this more like uh, is more like shiny um, it's really like important because if somebody is going on top of the surface uh, uh, and on, to on top of these uh, tiles uh, these uh, parts that are going up they more like shiny because they are are like more like smooth uh, from the boots or something uh, it doesn't matter uh, it because something is just moving on top of the surface and it is more like shiny and the surface that uh, inside the deepness uh, is more like uh, covered with dust and uh, more like matte that's why I'm using here invert grayscale because um, I hear uh, as you can uh, remember I'm using this for the height map uh, big cuts and uh, here you can see that this uh, black, uh, not black, sorry uh, like 
how to say uh, dark gray uh, it is here going in height uh, down and here uh, light gray is going up and for the roughness uh, if you look into this uh, map uh, not like a height map but as roughness this will be shiny but it's not uh, right uh, this uh, part is going down th so th it's it's covered with dust and that's why it must be like uh, light gray because it's more like matte surface Th that's why I'm using uh, invert gray scale here and uh, just adding on top of my like original tile uh, uh, variety of the uh, roughness uh, this uh, pattern uh, this noise uh, and here I'm just uh, again uh, adding uh, my uh, mask uh, from the curvature uh, just bring the uh, shininesses uh, to the edges uh, of the tile stones um, to, to catch to catch those light uh, on the edges uh, you see it's it's working here um, and yeah basically that's it uh, uh, because uh, this is the white uh, is coming f uh, for the grout and grout is created like really simple basically I'm using this uh, inverted uh, noise that is uh, was uh, using for the grout uh, height map uh, again I inverted it uh, with the same reason that the shape that is going down is m uh, is must to be matte and I in roughness uh, metallic workflow roughness must be like light gray if it's uh, matte surface and if it's shiny it must be uh, dark gray um, I'm blending uh, with again with this paint relay looking mask and get something like this um, uh, you can like ig ignore this step uh, it's uh, not doing anything basically uh, and I'm blending everything together so I'm blending this uh, roughness for the stones and this roughness for the gr uh, grout with this uh, mask uh, for the grout mask for, for the grout as you remember is coming from this mask but I just histogram scan it a little bit more to just touch only the roughness of uh, in between the uh, tiles and I get roughness um, so basically that's it uh, this is the uh, diffuse color um, this is a normal map you can see how it is looking it's uh, pretty clean and uh, I see this is line and I really don't like it <laughs> so I need like to fix it but overall is this looking like nice I think um, yeah so this is um, roughness this is ambient occlusion this is uh, height map overall and this is the mask uh, it's like a custom output maybe you if you are using uh, like old workflow with uh, diffuse and specular map for example you can use it in unity for the stylized looking textures that's why I created here like the mask from the curvature um, and uh, yeah it's it's nice to have it you can put uh, if you just use the uh, TGA uh, you can put into the alpha channel this mask and you can use it in the shader as the uh, rim light uh, spec light uh, into the uh, in the material yeah so 
basically that's it I think uh, hope the tutorial was uh, useful uh, and uh, I'm really looking that what you can like create using this uh, workflow uh, so experiment uh, maybe you will find out another uh, interesting workflow um, but yeah just keep in mind the main principles that I tried to describe here uh, basically it's not about the workflow it's about the concept of creating such textures uh, so just just keep in mind uh, the uh, directional light uh, shadows the overall coloring and just uh, be really freely uh, with the form and uh, just decrease the amount of the details um, yeah just keep 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 it simple uh, and add uh, uh, the uh, hand painted variety to your textures show you a little bit closer how it is looking so the roughness is really subtle but it is it is working I think okay um, so thanks a lot again guys uh, and girls <laughs> I'm uh, really appreciate uh, your time uh, that you're spending to look my tutorials uh, and uh, I'm really like uh, really uh, really thankful for all the support and all the comments uh, I'm having uh, I see that uh, you are interested and it's like the best uh, motivation for me to continue to create tutorials uh, hope uh, they are useful and you can use uh, those tips in your own work uh, yeah so yeah uh, keep creating and thanks a lot guys uh, see you in the next tutorial bye bye